Hey everyone, uh, Mr. Simons here doing a PowerPoint notes video. Um, my first one of these for Earth Science. I've done several for physics. I know they work pretty well. Time to do one for Earth Science. Gonna do a, uh, try to keep it short here, less than 20 minute lecture on how mountains form. So yesterday you did an assignment looking at how mountains form. So this should just be review, just like most of our lectures. This, you know how I like to do class. You guys explore things with some sort of assignment, you know, do some research on it first. Then I come in and I tell you the answers. Um, and I, you know, I explain it to you to help answer any questions you guys still have. You already checked it out yesterday, hopefully, if you're following instructions. You already know a bit about mountains and how they are made. Um, we looked at the book, we looked at the simulator, which is really cool. And I apologize, those videos yesterday were, were a pain in the butt. Um, I know that the YouTube video attempt, restricted mode was getting in some of your way. Um, Incognito, I think, is one way you can get around that. If you know how to make an incognito window in Chrome, you can watch the video in that window. and um, Or you can sign out, but you also have to sign out of 365, so you actually have to sign out of Teams in order to go to YouTube and watch the video. It's really annoying, and I apologize. Then I tried to make a stream video in Microsoft Stream, um, which is where I posted in the channel. You'll see the Earth Science Videos channel in Teams um, with a post from something called Microsoft Stream, which is like Microsoft's version of YouTube. But Microsoft servers were getting overloaded yesterday. So some of you couldn't see the video on stream because Microsoft was um, too slow. So the video yesterday was annoying. This video, because it's just a PowerPoint, um, I don't hope the restricted mode is not turned on for this video and everyone can see it on YouTube. That's, I think that should work. I haven't had any physics PowerPoint videos restricted mode yet. Um, so let me show you some things I can do here. Um, we've got the pen tool. So I can illustrate with the pen. We've got the highlighter. Colors. I've got a lot of colors to work with. I can change the pen's color too. And I can even erase things. So that's what we're working with here, and let's get to it. So, orogenesis and mountain formation. Orogenesis literally means mountain building. So, oros here. Um, talking about this here. So, oros uh, in Greek means mountain. And Genesis, just like the book of Genesis from the Bible, the creation story, um, Genesis means to create. So orogenesis literally means creating mountains. So orogenesis is creation of mountains, how mountains are made. Such as this one here, and I can't remember if that's Mount Everest or if that's a mountain called A2, which is another very, very, very tall mountain. Um, I think it's Everett. Regardless, very tall mountain. And today's all about how did that mountain get made. So we learned all about volcanoes. We know how volcanoes are made, but we know there's a lot of mountains that are not volcanoes. And we live by a lot of those mountains, right? You've never been skiing and had the mountain blow up. And the Rocky Mountains are not volcanic. They're they're not volcanoes. So um, how do mountains that aren't volcanoes get made? And most of those mountains are made at convergent plate boundaries. So where two plates are actually crashing into each other, kind of like this. So here's plate number one, blue, green. Let's make plate number two, blue. And these plates are actually colliding into each other. That is a convergent plate boundary. So that's where most of these mountains get made. Um, those were actually the two questions you had had to answer yesterday. Um, so hopefully you got those turned in. 
And there's a great picture there of what we're learning about. So you get two plates. Um, it can be anything. This is actually way back in the Pangaea. This is a picture of what happened back in Pangaea when South America and Africa were actually connected. And they crashed into each other and it made some mountains, which, which you can actually still see in Africa today. Um, they're not very tall anymore. They've worn down, but, but they're still there. Um, but anyway, South America and Africa crashed into each other, just like in the picture here, and that created mountains in between them. Because um, land, remember continents, they can't subduct. Land can't go down. So the only place for it to go is up, which makes these very tall mountains. So yesterday, I asked you to check out the simulator. Hopefully it worked. Um, you may have had to, you probably did have to click allow flash. So if it just says something about flash, just click allow. Um, your phones probably couldn't play it. Maybe, maybe not. But I'm guessing if you were trying to see it on your phone, it may not have worked. Um, so hopefully you were able to find one of the videos and get that to work for you instead. But if not, well, I'll show it to you now. Um, I can't show you the actual simulator, but I did take pictures, and it'll teach you everything you need to know. But basically, um, if you look at the simulator, it showed you that there are these five steps of how mountains are made. So let's take a closer look. Step one. Step one is right here. Here's a picture from the simulator. It shows there are two plates with a convergent boundary and there's an ocean in between them. So let's go ahead and call this one India. Can I, can I write? Nice, okay, I got it. And this one over here is Asia, A. Pretty good for a mouse. Um, so this is several million years ago, because now we know India and Asia are connected. There's no ocean in between them. They're touching. So this is several million years ago before they crashed into each other. India and Asia were not touching. There was an ocean in between them. Right? You can see that let's see, blue arrow. Ocean. Ocean in between India and Asia. So there's a convergent boundary, right? Those, those two plates are moving towards each other. You can see that here with the arrows. They're, crack, they're heading towards each other. And that leads to subduction here. So the ocean plate, the ocean portion, is subducting down underneath Asia, which makes volcanoes. Whenever you have subduction, and that's step two, Whenever you have subduction, you get an arc volcano. You get a volcanic arc. Lots of volcanoes, actually, not just one. You get a whole arc of volcanoes from that subduction. So that's step two, is you get some volcanoes forming from the subduction. Um, so, so there's no volcanoes anymore over in that part of Asia, really. But millions of years ago, there were a lot of volcanoes on the coast of Asia because of this subduction. So um, eventually, you can see here in this picture, um, you run out of ocean, right? So the two pieces of land keep heading towards each other like that. So eventually, they're going to crash into each other. No more ocean. So the land has crashed into the other land. No more ocean. So because there's no more ocean, the subduction stops. So there used to be that subduction there. One more time. So there used to be this subduction here, but now that has stopped. There's no more subduction because there's no more ocean. Land can't subduct. It doesn't weigh enough. Land doesn't weigh enough to subduct. It can't push down into the earth. Only ocean can do that. So when there's no more ocean floor, there's no more ocean plate left, subduction stops, which means there's no more volcanoes. Subduction is what makes the magma. So there's no more magma, there's no more volcano. So you get a dead volcano over there where, um, you know, there used to be a volcano because there's no more magma. So that's step three is um, the ocean plate completely subducts. There's no more ocean. And just like we said there, step four is the volcanoes turn off. I, I, I showed you that a little too early there, but that's okay. Basically, there's no more volcanoes anymore. 
in step four because there's no more subduction. Um, so why is that so important? Uh, again, I'm just I'm trying to remind everyone. Some of us haven't been doing a great job of doing our volcanoes work, so you might not even realize like, wait, what is a volcanic arc? So hopefully you got that message that um, the subduction, the ocean plate actually dropping down into the earth, is what um, creates the melting that allows the, the lava, the magma of the volcano to um really erupt so so when that subduction stops when there's no more ocean plate left uh the volcano stops too no more volcano if there's no more ocean plate. and then finally step five you get what's called a suture a fault line uh that forms as the mountains continue to grow higher and higher and higher so you have uplift so again, right, these are this is a convergent boundary. So these two plates are smashing into each other, but it can't they can't go down, right? No, not allowed to go down. I'm gonna erase this big mess here. Can't they, they can't go down, so the only place left for them to go is up, making very tall mountains. So they crash into each other, and all of that material from that crashing into each other gets pushed upwards. So this suture here you can see is still kind of gray, and that's because it's from the ocean floor. So that's old ocean floor that gets caught up in all of this uplift and gets pushed up as well. So that was another question you were supposed to answer yesterday on the assignment, is how come they can find old ocean animal fossils on the top of these mountains? It's because uh, that suture there's actually old ocean floor in the mountains the ocean floor gets pushed up as part of this uplift too that that ancient ocean remember there used to be that ocean in the middle and and so some of that old ocean floor where there's you know fish fossils or whatever gets pushed up so you can actually find fish fossils on the top of these old mountains because there used to be an ocean there but there's not anymore so some mountain ranges that formed this way, um, the Himalayas, the tallest mountains in the world where Asia and India crash into each other. That, uh, that's how these mountains formed like that. Um, the Alps where Europe and Africa um, used to crash into each other. They're, they're, you know, there's a little bit of ocean between them now, but back in the Pangaea days, they certainly Europe and Africa were crashed into each other. Um, same thing, the Appalachians over on the east coast of the United States. Obviously, the United States isn't crashing into Africa or Europe anymore, but um, back in Pangaea, when everything was connected, North America and Africa were actually crashing into each other, and that made the Appalachian Mountains. And those mountains stayed on North America after Pangaea, um, so over in the East Coast, West Virginia, those mountains, they, that, they were made this way. So they're not still growing because they're not crashing into each other anymore. Whereas the Himalayas, these ones, the Himalayas, they are still growing. Mount Everest is still growing because of this uplift. So um, that's where these mountains come from. So the last thing we need to talk about now is the Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains where we live. Right? Kind of important mountains to us. The, this is our home. Um, the Rocky Mountains formed in a very unique, strange way. There's not really any other mountains that formed this way. And in, in fact, uh, before we get into it, I do want to mention that there's still some debate of whether or not this is true. So, so people weren't around back to see the Rocky Mountains form. So all, everything we can do is try to look at what we can see and try to figure out what happened. So what I'm about to teach you is what most scientists think happened, but we don't know for sure. There's still some other ideas out there too. So um, it's easiest to see with a picture. So I'm just gonna get all this information up here now and then I'll explain it to you. So basically what happened is this over here is, oh, this is the Pacific Ocean. 
right, underwater. So this portion's underwater over here. That's the Pacific Ocean. This over here, you can do the Cascades Mountains. Um, those are in California, Washington, Oregon, over by the coast. Cascade mountain ranges, which actually are a volcano mountain range. There's volcanoes in California, Washington, Oregon, Mount St. Helens, you may have heard of, um, is part of the Cascades. So, and then we've got the Rocky Mountains way over here. You know, Colorado's kind of right here on the the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains. So that's that's where we are over here in Colorado. Um, so what happened? Well, the convergent boundaries. So North America, that arrow, and North America is heading that way. And the Pacific Ocean plate is heading that way. They're crashing into each other. So like usual, there's subduction. The, the ocean goes under the land with subduction, just like usual. And then um, let's zoom in. Let's zoom in here really quick. Arrows are gone now, so let me erase all these random arrows. Um, but you can see that the Pacific Ocean plate goes right on under North America like usual. So we've got subduction. And just like usual, when we have subduction, we get magma and volcanoes. So California, Oregon, Washington, they actually do get some volcanoes every now and then. Um, pretty rare, right? It doesn't happen every year. But every now and then, we get a volcano from the Cascades. Um, usually what happens, so I'm going to draw what usually happens, here, usually what happens is that the ocean just keeps on going down and down and, and sinks into the earth and, and disappears. Um, for whatever reason, the Pacific plate doesn't sink for a while. You can see that doesn't doesn't sink for a while. Uh, we're not exactly sure why. Maybe it hits a little hot spot or something and it keeps floating, but it doesn't sink for a while. So instead, what happens is it 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 kind of pushes up into the land again. So something some sort of force, a hot spot or something, jams this Pacific plate back up into North America. And it pushes it up and up and up and uplifts the Rocky Mountains from underneath. So that's where they think the Rocky Mountains kind of came from. It's getting pushed from underneath by the Pacific plate here because for some reason, so like normally, I'm going to highlight in yellow, normally, the ocean plate would just doop -a -doop, drop down and disappear like that, melt. For whatever reason, I'm going to highlight in green now what, what actually happens. For whatever reason, it doesn't melt. It keeps, it keeps going strong, and it actually pushes, pushes the earth back up into the Rocky Mountains. So that's where... Um, Many scientists believe we got the Rocky Mountains from. They're still researching to try and figure out for sure, get a better idea. But they think it's because the Pacific Ocean Plate, um, when it subducted under North America, it didn't actually melt all the way. Instead, it, it actually um, kind of pushed back up underneath and pushed the Rocky Mountains back up. Is, is all right, I promised I'd keep it to less than 20 minutes, and I did. Um, there's an exit ticket assignment that goes with this on Teams, so please make sure you go to the assignments on Teams and turn in your exit ticket to get your five points today. But that's it. Um, we've got uh, exit ticket. We've got a mini quiz tomorrow, mini quiz tomorrow about this mountain forming stuff. So please ask me questions if you have them. While you're taking tomorrow's quiz, ask me questions then, too. You guys know I'm always happy to help with questions on quizzes. Um, tomorrow's quiz is a mini quiz, and I mean mini quiz. Uh, it's an online quiz. So it's going to be pretty straightforward, lots of multiple choice, no crazy explain to grandma or anything like that. Just kind of your basic answer the question quiz. Um, and, and I don't think it should be too hard. You can use your notes. You know. Uh, can't stop you from using your notes or checking yourself. So hopefully, hopefully it's not too hard. So let me know if I can help with anything. But 
That is the mountain forming notes. Hopefully it helped answer some of your questions.